This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-hosts this week are Holly Christine and Gonzo Link. Hello, hello. Hello. And I still have not fucked it up yet. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is great because uh, before we started recording this, I actually recorded my next uh, Pokemon Fire Red run, and I fucked up my end. It's like, God oh, yeah. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, oh well. And in fact, by the time this goes up on my Patreon, there'll also be that there. There's also the new AVGN Adventures Blind Run video that's up on my Patreon. And if you haven't read the title or if you just aren't catching clues or whatever, we're going to be talking about crowdsourcing this week. Yes. Because that's all sorts of fun and all sorts of gobbledygook can be tossed around here and there and everywhere, depending on who's crowdsourcing for what and right. and 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 as people who listen to this know listen to the end of my shows i do have a patreon uh, you know to raise money to eventually hopefully one day not only be able to pay for equipment upkeep and and software upkeep and etc 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 but also maybe to be able to support myself through this and i know that's a lot of a lot of the major long-term goals a lot of people on Patreon have is to be able to do what we love, do what we can do, or do what we want to do, and be able to make a living at it, which, you know, it's very admirable, and it's it's a tough-as-shit thing, <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah. Well, I, can, I can imagine. I mean, it's hard enough just getting a regular job and, you know, the way things are, but, uh, you know, to be independently creative and to produce your own content and then put it out there where, you know, who knows who's going to see it who or how many people are going to see it. Yeah. Yeah, and I put it out there. I, I the One thing I hate about this is the whole uh, self-promotion thing because while I do get people who will reblog it or retweet it or, or share it or whatever, you know, I, f I feel a lot of it has to come on my shoulders. I've got to put the stakes out there. And I always worried, I'm always worried, rather, that it's going to become too spammy. Like, mm -hmm. like I get out there and, like, every day, hey, support my Patreon, or hey, uh, support this, or what have you, you know? I worry about that. And, and there's a, I, I, I guess there's, like, a little bit of justification in that because you do it too much. It is spammy, and people are going to not do anything to you or yeah. not do anything for you just out of spite. So I, I try not to do it. I mean... Like, when I put up my videos, when they actually go live on the site, you know, I do, like, six-hour posts through Tumblr. That way it catches, you know, it catches the first people. They usually go up about 7 o'clock Central Time now. They were originally going up at about 1, but so I was like, eh, whatever. So they start going up at 7 p.m. Central Time, and then for, like, the next uh, 24 hours or so, they go up every six hours just to make sure I can catch everybody that possibly can be caught, I hope. <laughs> mm hmm <laughs> So, that, is, that is always the hope. Yeah. Did you see my work? Did you see it? No? Okay, I'll put here, here it is again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And, and and even that, sometimes I wonder, is that too much? Is it? No, no, I don't know. But again, it's also every six hours. It's not like every 30 minutes. Boom, there's another one. Boom, there's another one. Boom, there's another yeah. one. So, I mean, even two hours might even be pushing it, but eh, you know. And, and, of course, at the end of every show, or at least every podcast that I do, we have the Patreon shout-out. We have all of that going out. And I don't – I not only don't – I don't only promote myself, rather, but I also <laughs> promote Becky, who, who has her own Patreon, who's like me. She's trying to go the creative route and, and earn money doing what she loves to do. She loves to draw. She loves to animate. <laughs> so she wants to earn money at it, and that's why I plug her along with me because mm. not only that. She does title card artwork for me, so you know, I, I can yes. I can actually damn good title card artwork. Damn straight. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me, I still need to send you a picture. Yes, you do, because because we're still working on updating title cards for other shows as well, uh, Thespian Talk included, and I've got to get new stuff for that and and everything there. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh. but uh, yeah, but and of course Patreon. To those who don't. Those who don't know, I don't think I went into much of what the Patreon was before I just started rambling about, you know, my end of the deal. Uh, Patreon is where you can go. You could give, you know, as little or as much as you want to a particular online personality or, or artist or what have you. 
and it's either per month or per production video, whatever, then that's how much you donate to them for whatever. Excuse me. And say you do it only monthly, then you say you say you send ten dollars a month. Then that at the end of that month it'll go. But if it's per production, then every time they post something and and whatnot, then that's ten dollars going there. Now you've got people like me who do anywhere from twelve to twenty five in a month, depending on podcast scheduling and how many videos I other videos I'm able to do. And that could get kind of expensive. Well, Patreon thought of that, and they actually have in place a little place where you can put in when you're actually setting up your uh, pledges or whatever that you can put in a little something that says, okay, don't go over this much in a given month. And it works. <laughs> in, <laughs> in fact, you know, through Patreon, that with the, some of the stuff that I've been getting, in, in a way, well, it's actually twofold. One, I really do want to support some of my fellow uh, producers out there. And also want to show that, yes, even though I'm getting just, like, not a lot, I want to say, yeah, even though I'm not getting a lot, I can still, you know, I still want to show, hey, you know, you don't have to be this big, rich motherfucker to be able to donate. You know, you can do it on just a small budget as I've got, as much as there is. So That, that actually brings up an interesting point that I've mm -hmm. seen people discuss on Twitter, which is, you know, we're in a community that a lot of people have patreons or you know other crowdfunding things mm -hmm. and there's this it gets to the point where it's like okay well now we're all sharing the same money because there's this sense of reciprocity it's yeah. like okay i have a patreon so you've donated to me so now i feel like i have to go donate, donate to your patreon this, yeah and it's like great so everybody just canceled each other out <laughs> this person donated ten dollars to that person's patreon and donated ten person to, ten dollars to that person's patreon yeah yeah so far i've been i've been lucky in that everybody that i do donate to they don't donate back to me and vice versa so it's not that i don't want to it's just you know it's how it is yeah. But, so at least at least from my end and at least eight other people's ends, it's all one way, either to me or from me. Yeah. So that that said, kids, you know, your your thoughts and your efforts are always appreciated. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, just passing money around and, and this goes to anything, doesn't do any good, really. Yeah. So if you know if you don't feel like you actually want to support something, it's okay to just accept a gift. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. In fact, that's sort of the point about giving is that somebody wants to support you, and that that doesn't you know they want to do something nice for you, and that you don't have to then turn around and be like, well, they did it for me, so I guess I should do it for them. That's, yeah. It defeats the whole purpose of giving. Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, you can do things for them. That's why you have the reward tiers and the perks and everything. Yeah. That's where that comes into play. Mine mine are relatively simple. Uh, you know, like my lowest tier, you get to catch all of these wonderful shows at least a day before they go live. You know, like right now, my newest ABGN Adventures Blind Run video, that goes live on Monday. Uh, as we're recording this, this is Wednesday, and it just got put up on the Patreon feed. So there's a few days, but these shows uh, on my podcast, they typically go up a little over 24 hours before they go live, which is one of the reasons why I set it up to 7 p.m. is because they usually get up there probably about 5 or 6, 7 if I end up getting a little too busy. And it's like, you know, I want to give everybody like a full 24 hours just, mm -hmm. just so it seems fair. Um, and of course, if I end up not being able to do it after till after a certain amount of time, then it gets pushed back a day. But, you know, that's technical stuff, really. And and so you have the so the, and that's the uh, lower reward. You get to see things at least a day early. And I've also got two other ones that are quite similar. I've got a middle one that you can request like one-off uh, gameplay videos, a one-off Gomer plays video, or what have you. And I do that, and I give you thoughts, and it's all well and good. And then I got the highest one where I've I've, I've put it in there, but I'm debating whether I want to keep it in there. You have the option of either a guest spot on one of the podcasts. Or you can request a review. Like, I've, I've actually got a requested review in the thing right now. I've just got to film it and get that ready to go. But my space is horrible. Ugh. It's always something. See, and I think you've done a good job of choosing the types of rewards that you're giving. And I think this is a place where a lot of people fall short. 
Yeah. Um, if yeah. any of you guys listen to Lord Cat, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking mm-hmm. about here. Mm-hmm. Um, because this is an issue that he's talked about before. But when you're offering a one-time reward for what is supposed to be a monthly or by the video contribution, it, there's no real incentive for, you know, right. aside from the fact that, yes, you know, people are trying to support you, but then what you've essentially done is just set up an eShop. Yeah. You know, you, you're, they're not right. actually helping promote your endeavor they just want whatever that thing is. Right. Yeah. You you offer them a monthly subscription for essentially nothing. Yeah. Like one one thing that you know that they get, then get but they don't get to do anything else after that, and they still yeah. they're still giving you money. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, sure. Do they maybe want an autographed picture or a copy of a script? Maybe. Um, but are they going to pay every month for that one thing? Probably not. Yeah. Well, it's oh. it's like with my stuff. I, initially, I had it limited on both ends. You know, it was like, okay, limited this or what have you. But I've turned it around, and, and I may switch it up later on because I'm worried it might bite me in the ass. But as it stands right now, I have few enough patrons, especially at the highest tier, to where I can say, okay, you know what, I will do it. You know, you can get it monthly so long as I don't have another one of your requests in the can type thing. Because mm-hmm. it, it, honestly, it is going a little slow. Uh, part of it was because of kids before. Now the kids are back at school. Now it's a matter of space issues, and I'm noticing that my tripod is a little off, you know, off kilter a little bit. It's a little tilted, and that's not good. Uh, it's always something, and I know it seems like, oh, you're just making excuses. Maybe, <laughs> but I'm, <laughs> I'm still also trying to work through everything, and it's just this. Like I've said, this space is horrible. It really is. It's not a lot of room to work with, unfortunately. But I will do what I can. But the whole request thing, it, it is a monthly thing if you want it to be monthly. Um, and so it's like, in fact, uh, the one person who is currently at the highest tier right now has uh, requested you know, a guest spot on one of the shows, and we'll just have to sit there and bang that out a bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but, you know, she's been busy. I've you know, of course, I'm over here doing my thing, so... And this is the same one who was also supposed... To, we've been working on uh, putting some ad, some of her advertisement up on the site, but again, she's had herself, you know, a busy time of it. She hasn't been able to get things worked out with me. I've poked at her a few times, and she's just been... You know, she's she's pretty busy. Mm-hmm. But, but, you know, busy or not, I still appreciate, you know, the fact that, hey, she is at that highest tier and giving me... You know, enough of her money a month to where, you know, I'm not just getting pennies through Patreon. I'm actually getting a little something, and it's something I feel I can give to others that may not be getting as much. Yeah. So. Well, and you know, the the reason I bring up that thing is because people are like, oh, Patreon. So yeah, now you're guaranteed money for your shows. Oh no, no but you're not. <laughs> you're you're really not. You know, um, I know Obscure Lupa went through this initially where it was like there was all this excitement because she reached the goal where she wouldn't have to use mid-rolls anymore, and that, that was super exciting because um, with the way that the the CPMs for the ads have gone down, you know, she just wasn't making enough money. Yeah, right. And, you know, there was nothing that she could do about that. It's not that she wasn't getting enough views. It's that the ads don't pay out as much anymore. Yeah. And right. there was all this excitement. Oh, I, you know, I've, I've hit this goal and now I don't have to use mid-rolls anymore. And at the end of the month, mid-rolls had to come back because everybody made a one-month donation and that was it. Yeah, that's, oh. And, 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 and I haven't had a look at hers. I've, I've, obviously, I follow her on, on Patreon, you know, keep an eye on her stuff. But I, I haven't really had a look at her things there. And that plus some of the stuff that Lordcat was saying – you know, is what convinced me. Okay, don't make it just yeah. a one-time thing. I mean, no, for a while, for a while, I also had uh, pins. You know, that I would go. I think it was like through one of those. Uh, I think it was like a cafe press uh, pin maker thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you put out money for that, and you send it out to somebody. Now, thankfully, the person that actually got a pin and wanted a pin. You know, she is not one of those one-time monthly things. You know, she wants to keep supporting because she honestly and truly supports what I do. Thank, thank, thankfully, <laughs> but uh, but you know, you know, a lot of this stuff made me think. Okay, discontinue that. But I'm also 
I'm also thinking of other ways to kind of support myself in terms of being able to do this and everything. And that's actually open up a, a store for the site, you know, mm-hmm. with, with different things. I've been talking with Becky on it on and off. It's kind of It's kind of fallen by the wayside with other things that we've got going on. But that's one of the things we want to try and do is have a store like T-shirts, buttons, hats, whatever. You know, I mean, it's it's it'd be a simple cafe press store, you know, and mm-hmm. and all of that. Of course, she would get some, I would get some, and then, you know, you know whatever else, you know, go into the site. We we would work all that out. That's kind of a a technical little bits and pieces there that can be worked out in time. But that's you know that's another way, and other people do it too. They have Etsy's. In fact, uh, don't don't you have an Etsy, Holly? Or, or yes, I do. Yeah. But yeah, that being said, you know, if you're it's. Um, cause I don't want people to take this the wrong way. It doesn't mean that you can't give out physical objects that are, you know, a one-time thing for m- monthly donations, but make sure that you're switching those up. So people have right. a reason to keep giving that. So like, if you're giving away well, buttons, change yeah, the design yeah. on the button. Right. Yeah. Or if you're doing like a monthly, uh, subscription type thing, you could have it be, if it's a pretty high tier, you know, like they, they're giving you a lot of money per month. You could say, like, okay, first month you get, like, something physical, and then the other months you just get, you know, behind-the-scenes access to what I'm doing. Yeah. And that, that – and actually, even as the show is going on, I, my mind still races, like, okay, what else can I do? What can I do there? Can I tweak this? Can I tweak that? Try and get more people to come in because it, be, it would be nice to be able to get to a point to where um, I actually can hit my first uh, reward tier. I, I, I say reward tier, uh, milestone tier rather. Mm-hmm. Got to differentiate between the two of those, um, because but yeah, ones, my, yeah, I think it helps if you look at campaigns that are very successful and see what they do. And a lot of those, as Gonzo mentioned, are giving behind the scenes access. There's, you know, people are doing Google Hangouts. You know, you can hang out and talk with me about, you know, whatever. Find out what's going on behind the show, or you know, whatever it is, the creative thing that they're doing. Yeah. That I've that has always given me pause. That has come into my mind every now and then, but at the same time, it's like ah, that just seems a little too exclusive from all of my fans. Uh, granted, all average of twenty of them, <laughs> and, and it, it's just ah, I mean, if I had like you know five thousand or however, that that might be more of a thing. But with with it being as as small as I've got, that just seems a little too exclusive. But and who knows, maybe. You know, maybe some people who are listening might actually be willing to pay for something like that. I don't know. Fake it till you make it. There's something like you that. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm serious about that. It's like, you know, it, how does anyone ever become, you know, the big time if they always think of themselves as the small time? You know, you, you're not going to know if that's something that people are going to want to have or, you know, be exposed to unless you offer that up as an option. you got a point. You know, and I and I know for a lot of people who are making videos or whatever, it it seems like well, you know, this is such a tight knit community because, you know, people in, I, oh God, <laughs> I almost said a word oh that I hate. Um, people who are into um, content, video content creation on the internet or or podcasting on the internet. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you who don't know, I really hate the word review of Earth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> drives me nuts because not all creative content creators, uh, you know, not all new media creators on the internet are making reviews. Yeah. Mm. It's like, hi. <laughs> yeah. Because people, you know, people say review of Earth, but would they count the show? Yes. So it's like, but we don't review anything. No, not really. I mean, they could, <laughs> they could technically count the Poor Charlie podcast because that's basically an hour-long review. That right. could be counted. This and Thespian Talk, not so much. Yeah. You know, yeah. We're, we're new media creators. We're not necessarily reviewers. Yeah. Anyway. I, yeah. I just tend to call everybody who does things like this producers because that's what we do. We produce. Yeah. Yeah, content creators. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And now I totally forgot where I was going with that thought. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dang it. Oh uh, well, but um, but yeah, I've I've you started. Oh, I remember what it was. Sorry. There she goes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was because everybody in this community is such a tight knit community, and everybody knows everyone else. And even if you're not friends with them, you know, you, you know all of the big names, and and you have a lot of the same friends, and all of that yeah. 
And, you know, even what's going on with uh, Channel Awesome picking up those new producers, it's like all you have to do is look at their Twitter accounts. And just by being announced that they're with Channel Awesome now, you notice that you have like five or six friends in common. Yeah, and you're like, right. oh, I, I may have never seen this name before, but here, here it is. We have all of these connections that we didn't know about. And I think Definitely. that that's why a lot of people feel like, you know, Google Hangouts or behind the scenes access seems um, like it's a little bit of overkill because it's like, yeah, well, but these people are my friends. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would, I would be super happy if I, you know, donated to, I mean, if I had the money to donate to like a top tier reward system and got to, you know, like do a Google Hangout every week or so or every month or so, even with, uh, you know, one of my favorite producers, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I, I, I love this community. I mean, I love the, you know, the people in, in it. I made so many friends, and I've had a lot of, you know, great connections. And it's it's a, it's a cool community, and it is nice to be able to support if, if you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Oh, and and I've also seen and I've also seen an example coming to just Patreon itself of a way you really should not use Patreon. And oh, excuse me. Well, pardon me again. I'm very burpy this week. Uh, maybe it has to do with Coca-Cola. With that yeah. being said, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, one way to do a Patreon campaign wrong, and that is uh, this. Oh God, I forget the guy's name right off the top of my head. But what he's working on is a documentary. Uh, I think it was called The Sarkeesian Effect. <laughs> I've I've heard that this is a thing that's you know in the works, but I I don't actually know any of the details on it yet. Yeah, it's basically rebutting everything that Anita Sarkeesian says, and and he comes across, in fact, uh, I like can't, a douchebag. Yeah, like a douchebag. <laughs> like, uh, and, and he's a libertarian, which in and of itself is not a bad thing, but. Becky and I, one night when we found out who this guy is, we actually went and we, I, we looked through his YouTube channel because, you know, you got to know. And we saw his video on Hobby Lobby and all of that, and we watched his video, and there were so many inaccuracies. We just we, – it was painful for us to sit through it, but we sat through it, and it's just, oh my god, this guy – and this guy is raising money through Patreon, which Patreon – it's supposed to be an ongoing thing. You know, it is basically you are providing these content providers, these producers, these artists a paycheck. You're basically right, yeah. doing what Walmart would do if one of us had been able to be hired there, for example, you know, providing us a paycheck. And what he's using Patreon for is a Kickstarter. Yeah. And it while that's – while pe and people are giving him money. And you know what? I, I'm, I'm, you know, when this product project is finished or whatever, we'll look at it. We'll probably point and laugh. People will get upset and get pissed. But, but it's like, okay, you want to raise money for this thing? Fine. Um, yeah, it's your prerogative. You can, you know, raise money, however you want to, if you can. Yeah. Well, but the the, the thing is, though, yeah, it's like, why use Patreon for something like this? I know, right? I mean, it's it's one thing if you set something like this as a far off goal if you reach this much per month if you know we're making this much per month in in terms of patrons our paychecks are this big then yeah we'll start working on this but but that's also with you know with other things going on like for example if i was to set let's say a two thousand dollar per video milestone that will never happen but <laughs> if it happened two thousand dollars per video i would like have something big like okay you know what i would actually start a convention or something. No. Homercon? <laughs> well, okay, close enough. But, you know. Does you know, it have a ball pit? <laughs> I don't think well, so. Well, if, if it were Gomercon, it would have a ball pit, but it's not what you would expect. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, Holly is right. <laughs> oh, she is totally right about that. But that's, you know, if you're going to do something that big and use Patreon for it, you know, work up to it. You know, what he, again, like I've said, what he's doing is better for a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe or an Indiegogo. 
You know, stuff right. that's not going to be continuous. It's going to be just a one-time thing you plan on using all this money for, and there you go. You know, and and that's my you know the the topics and everything that he's got going on in this project aside. That is my biggest issue with him using Patreon. I mean, and yeah, obviously nobody's stopping him, and it's his it's it's his prerogative to use it, no problem. But just know that I think you are sitting on a pile of wrongness for doing so because <laughs> because what you're looking for is a one-time thing, not an ongoing thing. Patreon is for ongoing. Right. You know. Yeah. Uh, and speaking yeah. of speaking of other uh, fundraising platforms, I do I did recently I wrestled a lot with this. I did add a second one, and this is actually a GoFundMe that I've got specifically for the site, and that's because well we're okay. running out of space, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, because and, and I mean like you know storage space for these podcasts and everything else that we're doing, uh, especially with some video producers. I know I'm one of them. I think uh, Miss Nightmare is another one who cannot really rely on YouTube for some of their videos. Like me, I can't – I don't feel like I could put like my older reviews up on YouTube without worrying about being slammed up the butt with you know copyright notices or what have you, even yeah. though it's fair use and she's in the same way. And you know, this, the extra space to put it on the site directly would be nice, but we're running low on space. <laughs> so I said, okay, you know, this is a one-time thing. You know, and if I could cover it through Patreon, I would. You know, that that is the big thing. It's like if I could already cover it, it would already be covered. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So I have the GoFundMe, and that's just a one-time thing. Once the campaign is over, once the money is raised, and we got the extra space, it's done, it's over with. And if you want to continue supporting, you'll head over to Patreon. But and and if and if by some miracle or sheer luck or what have you that Patreon ends up being able to hoof it before the GoFundMe campaign finishes, then I'll close down the other one and we'll just continue as normal. Of, of course, if the other one has extra money or whatever, that will still go to the site because I still want to – still working on a site redesign, and that's going to require paying somebody for artwork. Oh, yeah. So you know, even if it doesn't go all completely for storage space – it's going to go towards artwork in terms of the uh, GoFundMe. Uh, and yes, that is full disclosure, disclosure out there because you know what? If you're going to throw money at me, you are technically – you are investing in me, and you deserve to know. <laughs> mm. So I mean Grant is so do about 19, 18, 17, 16 other people at this point on average, but eh, <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> and yeah, that's, well, yeah. but I feel like – there are some people who are doing various campaigns, whether it's Patreon or Kickstarter or Indiegogo, who don't think that they owe their investors any sort of uh, um, any sort of transparency about what's going on. Yeah, I mean, hell, I, I mean, less so with Kickstarter because the requirements on Kickstarter are stricter than other crowdfunding platforms. But right. <laughs> I mean, hell, I have – I actually use QuickBooks thanks to my parents you know, giving me a free copy of it. I use it to electronically keep track of all my books, and if anybody wants to look at it, fine. you know. And I will admit there have been times – yeah, I've, I've splurged a little bit here and there on myself. You know, you can't – you know, with, when it comes to Patreon stuff because – Well, I don't even think that you have to give out you know, specific – you know, yeah. access to your books or anything. No, but I do think to. it's like, you know, what the hell is going on? And yeah. it, it, everybody knows what I'm about to hit on here. But, <laughs> you know, this is <laughs> this has been the big thing in the community. Channel Awesome raised $90,000 for a show mm -hmm. last year, mm -hmm. a year ago. Yeah. A yeah. year ago at this point that we haven't seen yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, we've seen We've seen some pictures. Yeah, we've seen a couple behind the scene pictures, but that's it. Yeah, and 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 I admit at first I was like, okay, people are bitching ninety thousand dollars. We haven't seen it a lot, and we've seen some of the set pictures, and they look well. Uh, I I have to say that high school plays probably have better sets than that. At least my high school did. Surprising, but but I, at first I was like, okay, you know, that probably went to a lot of equipment or whatever. And then I was very, very swiftly uh, reminded that equipment doesn't cost that much. It's expensive, but not that expensive. No, no, ninety thousand dollars for equipment is like if you're getting a red epic camera. Yeah. I mean, 
you're 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 making a serious investment in like your filmic quality, and you know, the, it's that's not the quality of the nostalgia critic reviews. No, or, yeah, or, and, I, I really mean, and those of you who, up. yeah, and those of you who know me, you know that I used to work with Channel Awesome, and I know how much you know work and you know all of right. that. I'm not trying to undersell the. Right, that goes into these productions. And that being said, you know, I I am also one of those people who is like, okay, I know that they promised several shows, um, and we've seen a couple behind the scenes things, but this is one of those instances where it's like, if you just gave us the information about what's going on, I don't think people would mind as much. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's like, and in, 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 I'm even going to put it onto my thing because right now I'm working with uh, Dark Rose Prime on putting together a kind of a Minecraft machinima series that ties into my own review series, which if you pay attention to my Tumblr or the site's Tumblr or whatever, I've been reposting the old reviews because some of them have, you know, the story bits inside of them, you know, usually towards the end of the reviews or whatever. They do play into what she and I are working on. And I at first I was like, okay, we're going to try and have it going by September or October or whatever. But apparently, I can't write for big epic stories worth a damn. <laughs> and <laughs> and this is me admitting this. And 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 she will not she will not deny this. She will agree with me. So we're we're still hammering out details of stories or whatever, and this and that and things and stuff. And so, you know, thankfully, it's not really been people throwing money at us specifically for this. I mean, I still get the money through Patreon, but that's also a general funds thing as well. So at least at least here. And, and I know maybe I know it probably sound like, oh, I'm doing better than Channel Awesome in this. Oh, look at me. But but at least in this case, you guys are knowing, hey, you know, this is why it's delayed. Uh, and I'm admitting my weakness and I'm working on it. Or at least we're trying to work on it. And this is how we're going to try and get things to go, right? So, and yeah, I mean, and that that that's the thing. I mean, like, just at, at the end of it, we just haven't heard anything yeah. about where the ninety thousand dollars that they they crowdsourced for these new shows went to. I mean, we've seen one picture of this game show that they're producing that looks like it was thrown together for about fifteen bucks. Well, I'm sure that it costs more money than that. Well, but... yeah, it's just like, <laughs> in terms of, like, appearance, it's just like, wow, that's what you spent your money on, huh? And yeah. that we're not getting I mean, and any... you can see some of their new, like, you can tell that they bought lights and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, you, you know, you know that they're spending their money, but it's like, but where's the product? Right, yeah. yeah. That's, for me, that's the more concerning part. It's like, you know, I, I'm I'm willing to trust that the money has been appropriately spent, but where's the thing that you said you were spending it on? Right. Yeah. That that's what we want to know. We want to know. <laughs> we want to know. Channel yeah. Awesome, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you keep your audience in the dark, it it tends to not really work out so well. Yeah. I mean, and maybe that maybe maybe that's why my site, I mean, we're not like up there with, you know, even close to touching the foot of Channel Awesome at this point, or maybe we are. I don't know. But I can honestly say that's one of the reasons why we haven't crashed and burned. Like, and, and I'll give you another example of this. Um, we recently had the site auditions. You know, and, and that initially I was going to pick only 10 because there, were, there was a decent amount. I, mean, I think it was between uh, 10 and 20 that actually sent in auditions through the forum on the site or what have you. And I went and picked. And it's like, okay, you know, this is this is good, you know. But I got a s- couple of people that that uh, sent some in after I had already announced, hey, you know, auditions are over. This is, you know, this is what's going to happen. I didn't announce everybody, which I really should have, and and everything. But you know, hindsight's twenty twenty on that. Mm-hmm. So I went through the actual WordPress thing, cause, cause I was just poking around, seeing what I could do to like fix up the site or whatever. And I went through the feedback section where it where WordPress actually stores all of the information that is sent through the actual form that you put up. So I looked through there and I noticed there were like two or three of them that had never reached my email inbox. And I'm like, oh shit. So immediately I saw that and I put out the word, okay, 
WordPress ate a couple of them, and I Oops. apologize. <laughs> yeah, WordPress ate a couple of them, so I'm going to give you guys a chance, and anybody who straggled in, just so I can be fair, give all of you guys a fair shake, and I'll select the next two, which I did. And again, idiot me, I need to remember to announce everybody at once. Because, <laughs> god damn it, because... And, and to be fair, Thespian Talk is also another way of getting the, the other people out there. Uh, like we've had Jess Kittrick on a couple of times. Um, we've also had – no, we haven't had Mr. Mendo. He is slated, though, and he is new on the site. Uh, we've had uh, Magic Steve, who is also new on the site. We've had uh, Travis Jones from Bloody Chuckle Studios also hop on. Um, oh, God, who did we have this week? Um, 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 oh, yeah, the, the uh, Isle of Rangoon guys. Uh, uh, whose first names I am totally forgetting at this point, but uh, we've got the Rangoons. We've got we've got puppets. <laughs> fuck you, fuck all y'all. We got puppets. Fuck all y'all. We got puppets up here. Fuck here. yeah, we got puppets. Fuck you. Fuck yeah, yeah puppets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and and we still have others. Uh, like, and and I guess. If you're listening to the show, you're getting like a little bit of the extra one. I really need to put out a whole list because, and apologize for being late on the whole list. But uh, we also picked up uh, Zach Lawrence, who does the indie Christian reviews. He, and oh my God, it, it, no pun intended, he he does an amazing job. Nice. And, and a lot of, in fact, a lot of the producers on the site, myself included, we all have Patreons. You know, including Zach, including uh, the Rangoons and and Jess and everybody. And I, I try to make it a point on the site to at least have a place you can go, and and I, I think the actual thing is said, you know, support our producers or support us or whatever. And there's a drop down list, and there's everybody that has a Patreon, everybody in every show, because I know the twelve hundred one beyond guys, they have, uh, they have, they've had two separate ones for two of their shows. So, so there's one for me, there's one for Diamanda, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if you wanted to support us and you didn't know any other way, and unlike me, they didn't put it out there on the, the on their shows or anything, there's a list for you, handy dandy list. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, wow. I rambled a bit, <laughs> <laughs> but then again, when do I not? No. Oh, so, so what are, now, what are some of the worst? Uh, Crowd crowdsourcing, crowdfunding campaigns you two have ever heard of that you can think of, like off the top. Everything of your head. that follows um, potato salad. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! No. <laughs> like you had to know we were going to talk about potato salad. Yeah, I've forgotten about that. <laughs> I don't have a problem with the potato salad campaign. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Um, I actually thought it was hilarious. I thought if people actually want to donate money to this potato salad guy, that's cool. Yeah. Um, you know, because it's it's your yeah. money, and just like you know, we talked a little about the the ALS campaign last week. Yeah. And you know, while I don't think that that is a great place to put your money, and there are a lot of reasons behind that, you know, it's not my place to tell you what you can and cannot do with your money. Right. Um. You know. I'm not going to put my money there. I gave my money to um, a charity in, um, that works for clean water efforts in Africa. There you go. Um, okay. But, you know, do what you want. <laughs> yeah, right. It's your money. Now, um, the other thing about it is it was clear that this was just a joke at first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but the way he responded to it is the biggest reason that I don't have a problem with that campaign. Because what he did was he's like, you guys want to keep giving? Okay, then I'm going to keep giving back to you. And tried to figure out exactly, you know, all, all of the different things that oh. he could do to give back to people. So it was, you know, I'm going to host this epic party and I'm, you know, you're all going to be invited. And, you know, I'm going to, you know, and he was, I think, working with a radio station on that. Oh, nice. um, you know, he made T-shirts. Um, you could get hats. It was, you know, it was all of these different things. It, you know, I'll, I'll put all, I'll put together a potato salad cookbook. So it was like, you know, he kept finding more ways. And, you know, he knew that people were concerned about the extreme amount of money. Now, off the top of my head, I don't know what the amount, the amount of money raised was. But it was 
um, it was a lot. And people were concerned about, you know, what are you going to do with that much money? Because you really don't need that much money to make potato salad, even if you are hosting this epic party and making T-shirts and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, right. And he did start talking about, like, you know, I know that there are specific rules about, you know, how Kickstarter says you can spend your money. Um, but I'm going to try to find a way to work within those rules to be able to donate it um, to food shelters. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I I I am on board with you on that one. It's like, yeah, can't can't really complain on that one because he's trying so, to do the good thing. Right. So I didn't have a problem with that campaign. Now the campaigns that followed, I was like, seriously, guys. Oh, oh. the people that try to copy it. Yes, the copycat. Oh dear. Because hey, I saw this guy do it it's so easy. He made a potato salad Kickstarter. I can make a carrot salad Kickstarter. People will love me. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so they so let's say people give you all this money. What are you going to do with that, genius? I'm going to make Right, well, first money. of all, it's like sometimes just repeating a joke, it's not funny anymore. Yeah. And and that was the case in a lot of these. It was like, guys, the, the potato salad thing was clearly a joke. Yeah. Like, and, you know, even during the course of its run, like, if you couldn't tell that it was a joke, I was just like, seriously <laughs> you know because there were like donations of ten thousand dollars being made and you know then you know the day the next day that donation would be gone because clearly that person didn't have ten thousand dollars to donate but it was like how do you guys not get that you know it's a joke and people are having fun with it mm -hmm. and just because you try to do something similar doesn't mean that you're telling the same joke right it's just you guys just just there. You, it's, it's this thing called a bandwagon. You don't have to jump on it if you don't want to. I've missed plenty of bandwagons. I've jumped on some. I think we all have from time to time. But you don't have to jump on every one of them. You know, I mean, I mean, when I was younger, if I had been a better artist, I probably would have jumped on the bandwagon when Nintendo Power held their Robot Master design contest. But I <laughs> couldn't draw worth a shit. <laughs> Uh, and some of those designs ended up getting used in a Mega Man game. So, you know, hey, awesome beans. And there were some really good designs, some really great artists that sent stuff in. And a lot of them were kids, you know, mm -hmm. kids around my age. So it was pretty good. That's the kind of bandwagon that's fun to get on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but the potato salad one, from everything that's come after it, it's like, no. no. Yeah, I mean, and that, that was like just the worst part of that whole thing for me. I mean, I was like... I, I, I was pretty, I was kind of shaking my head during that whole thing because I just didn't even know what to think, really. <laughs> but I, I, was, I wasn't just like, you know what, this is, this is going to be fun. If people want to donate, this is going to spawn so many copycats. It's not even going to be funny anymore. It it's did, gonna get, too. I'm it's going to run into the ground and it's going to die painfully. <laughs> yeah, like the AL, the, the ice bucket challenge, like, like we brought up last week. I'm still seeing people do it. Somebody tagged me, cause, and it shows me that that person didn't listen to my damn show, because I said last week, I can't do it because I'm po. Yeah. Uh, you didn't listen. <laughs> that's, that's, the only, that's the only thing that annoys me. You just didn't listen. <laughs> I mean, and I've had friends. I've actually had friends, like, 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 you know, do the thing, and they would forget to mention anything about why it's done why why what this is for what ALS is what what the, your money what the money's going to be going to if they donate at all and one of my friends that did it I'm looking at her I'm like okay you're doing this you're you you you're typically kind of po now that you say this I'm 95% sure that my brother-in-law did not mention ALS which Oops. is bad because he's a health teacher <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> ouch! I might have to give him some shit about that. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just, ow! Oh god! Oh, but yeah, th th that's oh, 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 no, 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 no! I just thought of the worst, currently the worst fundraising campaign ever. Currently. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's all of those motherfuckers raising money for fucking Darren Brown. Oh my god. Don't even get oh. me started on that. Oh god. And, and, and like now that you say that, yeah, there, you know, there are all of these other crowdfunding websites like GoFundMe and sometimes the, uh, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. just there's I don't think I don't get the impression anyway that there are any sort of limitations on what you can make a campaign for but it's I think it was you that mentioned it on Twitter the other day that it was like um, a sex worker who was trying to pay for her medical bills got kicked off of GoFundMe I think it might have been GoFundMe Um, and yet we're we're raising money for a guy who killed a kid yeah pretty much it's like yeah. That's okay, but paying your medical oh, yeah. bills purely no, no. because you work in the sex industry, that's not acceptable. No, 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 no at all, because... Like, can anyone explain that to me? Yeah, I know, so, right? Yeah. Kill anyone? She, like, god damn. Well, she, she <laughs> might have... Bills. She, she might have scarred an innocent child who came across one of her videos unintentionally. Yeah. Oh my, my. Oh no. Oh. Horror. Yeah. So here are some of the things uh, on GoFundMe that are, people are actually raising money for. And I'm just looking on the main site, Popular Now. Just, My favorite, uh, I just have to put this out there right away, uh-huh. was beer and video games. <laughs> beer and video games. Hey, you know, at it least you're like, honest. Yeah, you're honest about it. I can't really blame you for that. Um, I'm not going to support your beer and video game habit. I would like to pay for my own beer and video games. Thank you very much. Damn straight. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so let's see. We have first one, Justice for Panda. And it it seems like, uh, you know, what it was going to be doing was, uh, looks like paying for uh, vet bills for a cat, which... Unfortunately, according to this, the cat passed away. So whose name is Panda? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So I was like, oh. Does it look like a panda? Well, it's it a little bit. At least in the color, in the color scheme, yeah. Oh, so we have that. There's also let's see, ALS ice. Okay, this is an ALS ice bucket challenge. GoFundMe that that they're doing. Um. Why wouldn't you just give your money to the ALSA? I don't just, know. Just, just <laughs> that's 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 a weird one, but that's that's not too bad. And then there is another one: help get this person to Disneyland. I, I'm going to, you know, withhold her name just to be safe. Um, Oh yeah, there was there was one that I heard of that was a girl who she and her sisters wanted to go to a convention in Canada. It yeah. was not Com Bravo, by the way. Right. <laughs> and it was like people were like, it, it, mm. "So you want to pay for us to for you to go to a convention?" It's like, you know, I, it has sort of engendered this idea that you can ask for literally anything. Yeah. You know, right. and, and it's. It's almost disappointing because, like, a girl that I went to high school with, um, they found some severe problems in their home, and they actually had to abandon their home because it was making one of their sons very, very ill. Oof. And, you know, right now, they can't afford to get their home fixed, and they can't afford... Because, you know, now they have all of these medical bills to pay, Mm -hmm. and they can't afford a new place, and all they're trying to do... They're living with... uh, I think of her in-laws and all they're trying to do is raise enough money so they can, you know, move their family into a, a home that has room for everybody instead of just, you know, cramming yeah. themselves into two bedrooms. Right. I do want to, I do want to add on the uh, Disneyland one I just brought up before we went to this other one here is the person in question has been battling leukemia and exhausted all of her treatment options. So it, it's more like a make a wish type uh go fund me here right yeah. Yeah. so that i can get behind in fact if i had money i would i would donate right now yeah. on the air <laughs> because that that that's a good thing uh, right and but that i actually i posted a, i just posted a link uh this, this is like one of the kickstarters that i found um that i i this is like such a shameless e-bag that it's it's really kind of sad because it, it's this it's a kickstarter for this guy who wants who wanted to uh, do a viral technology mashup where it it was he wanted to make a, a video of him riding a Segway on an omnidirectional treadmill while wearing an Oculus Rift. What? And he was asking for five thousand dollars. Okay. 
And he has a, you know, he has the breakdown right here. I mean, the Oculus Rift, 350 plus shipping and tax. Mm-hmm. Virtual Xomni, 499 plus shipping and tax. And the used Segway, 2,999 to 329.99. Or 329.9. Wow. <laughs> I can't think <laughs> right now, but yeah, it's just... <laughs> like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll I'll support you in getting an Oculus and an omnidirectional treadmill on a Segway so you can create a five-second video. Yeah. Sure, why not? And, you know, if you're going to make more than just that, then, sure, maybe. But oh. that's, no, that's just no. And and I'm looking at it now, and the, somebody only pledged, they only pledged one dollar. Somebody thought it was a good idea. Yeah. Somebody was just like, you know what, this guy's got the, got it right. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah, do more than just a, a small thing. Do something big with it. Make a movie out of it, man. You know, yeah, I mean, if you're, yeah, if you're, if you're requesting all this hardware for yourself, you better, and you're, and you're, you're asking people to pay for it. You better damn well have something good to show for it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, so yeah, that that is our biggest, our big spiel on the whole crowdfunding Patreon, and and I don't know part of it was kind of, kind of a self um, promotion thing for myself as well because, you know. Can always use the help with the Patreon and, and with the site stuff through the GoFundMe, and um, you know. But oh yeah. But yeah, you know, be honest. You know, if you need the help for this or whatever, just be honest, and hopefully people will be willing and able to, you know, throw in and say, "Here, I I I, I like the stuff that you do. Here you go. You know, help make things better." And I would like to. And in fact, since I've be since I've been on Patreon, things have been better. Um, just looking at my gameplay videos alone, um, you know, with, through Patreon, I was able to not only get things like Fraps, which records just screen shares and screens and, and different windows and stuff. They mostly use it for, like, PC games or what have you. That has helped me immensely, and the quality, oh my god, is amazing. Takes nice. up a shit ton of hard drive space in the raw files, but it, it's worth it. You know, yeah. And, also, a couple of the games that I've run, uh, Portal 2, the AVG and Adventures, you know, those would not have been possible without people through Patreon supporting what I do. Ah, uh, and yeah, and oh god, that's like, and in fact, even the new controller that I have to help play, to help with these games, this also was also possible through people supporting me through Patreon. In fact, even the movie that I picked up for the. Uh, Five dollar reward tier. Possible by viewers like you. Yes, <laughs> basically, yeah, yeah. You know, even the DVD I picked up for the movie, which, uh, well, I, I, okay, I'm not gonna give my full opinion on the air. I'm not gonna do it because spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it. Can't do it. But, but yeah, a lot of the stuff that I have produced since starting Patreon has been possible because of my patrons. So, basically, a huge thank you. And that's why, I, honestly, I think Patreon is probably the greatest thing that's, that could have happened to this community. Simply because, like, <clears throat> pardon me, because you're not, you know, setting up, you know, a, a big goal system where it's like, I, I need to reach this $5,000 goal to be able to produce my content. It's just like, hey, I'm, I can produce my content. I'm still producing it. But if you want to help out on a monthly basis or, you know, or something or, you know, or, or a per video basis then, you know, please contribute what you can and it it, it it keeps supporting me and it keeps, you know, it it allows me to be able to do this and provide you with content and I'm not setting up a huge campaign where I'm, you know, I, I could fail pretty Yeah, where it's make right. it or break it. It's like, I, I want to keep doing this and if you want me to keep doing this, then, you know, please help out. Yeah. yeah. And that's that I've seen some poor behavior from fans who are like, well, but how do I access your Patreon stuff early? Well, you have to, you have to give money. Yeah, oh, right. well, I'm, I don't want to do that. So how do I see your stuff early? Did, no, you don't. You don't, you don't. You don't get it. <laughs> yeah. It, it, like you literally don't get it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen some patron Patreon campaigns where it's like over like a dollar or whatever. I, I, at least for me, I make it very simple. If you give just a dollar per production, and even if that's all you end up giving per month, you know, you still gave 
So I give you access because, you know, you get the early access. Even if you give only $1 per production and end up limiting yourself to maybe like 4 or $5 or what have you, you yeah, still get yeah. that because, hey, you're, you're, you're helping. You, you are giving. Every dollar counts, and one of the ways I show that is everybody who gives, everybody who, who, who gives through Patreon, they get the, ac the early access to all the shows, to all the videos, all of the new reviews, you know, when they actually come out. <laughs> Yeah. You know, all the new podcasts, everything. They get it first, no matter what. Ooh, and 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 my lungs were trying to send it a burp, and it didn't want to do it. I hate when that happens. <laughs> oh, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But I do, I do want I to. Ex hate. Yes, very much so. I do want to extend a few things, and in fact, even over the course of the show, I've got a few ideas brewing in my head because the way I see it, my Patreon campaign is always moving, always evolving to different things, different times, and maybe new ideas that I may have dismissed at first, but now maybe, maybe not so much of a bad idea. Well, you know, that's something to check out and, and look at again. Um, yeah. And, and I think all good camp Patreon campaigns need to be that flexible. And say, okay, yeah, these are not necessarily set in stone. We can we can work with this. We can compromise. If this isn't working so well, let's try this idea. And and uh, real quick before we we finish up, I did want to go over uh, like my milestone goals because I, I had started to before, but we got sidetracked by something else. And if you look at mine, mine are relatively you know relatively simple considering mine is a per video basis. My milestones are a little lower, especially with the amount of productions that I can produce a month, videos, productions, whatever. Like my lowest one is $50 per video or per production or whatever. And if that's consistent, then, hey, you know what? That, that, that's a good thing. I mean that, that could allow me you know, to do different things. I mean I could upgrade equipment. In fact, let's see. I mean just – let's see. Uh, I think 600 if I do like just the podcasts or whatever, you know, three podcasts a week for four weeks or what have you. Um you know that would be a good 600, and that would be more than enough to upgrade a lot of my equipment, like my camera, and, and even start looking around maybe for better recording space. I mean, down here rent is not as expensive, and and everything, and you know, and even then I could always find roommates. And that's one of the one of the things that is kind of unspoken about Patreon, is that it's not just for what we put up there, like equipment or at, like at my highest tier, I want to do more of a convention circuit, you know, to get my name out there to kind of hobnob and and and, and all of that good stuff. But it takes money in order for me to do that, and I want to be able to do that, do that comfortably, and not have it detract from like my bills at home or from the quality of my work. I want to be able to do that and still be able to survive. That's the important thing. Um, and, and granted, at where I am now, even at the $50 level, I could do maybe one convention a year, you know, maybe two depending, but if, if we reach the $50 level. But the $200 level, which is the highest one, would be the, would be the one where I could say, you know what, I could live anywhere I want, or oh, almost anywhere I want, and be fine and still be able to do, go to like a few conventions a year, still be able to produce, be able to have my own place, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So – and I do the spiel at the end of every show, and it's usually a little bit different, but all this right here hopefully would give – if you're actually wa listening to the show and watching my stuff and actually considering um, – patronizing me on patreon or whatever then hopefully that this show right here this episode right here would give you a lot more insight than what i give usually as a two minute spiel at the end of each show um so uh with that um we're about down to the last minute uh, do either of you have any final thoughts um uh, i pretty much said everything I, I i guess i needed to i mean i think patreon's a great thing and i think crowd sourcing in general is a really good thing it's you know, it allows people to pursue their own goals and their, you know, their their dreams. And if they have an idea that they can, you know, put it out online and say, like, hey, do you guys want to contribute to this? Do you want to help make it a reality? And, you know, people can choose whether or not to donate. And it's it's a good thing. But it also, just like just like pretty much everything, it's got some real it, – it has bad it has bad aspects. And it allows people to raise money 
for things that they really shouldn't be raising money for. And I'm not saying that like a philosophical way. I'm just saying like, yeah. you don't need, it, it, it was, it was a funny joke, but you really don't need however much money you raise to make a potato salad. No, yeah. no. Unless you're like absolutely starving. Then yeah. No. So yeah. Kind of adding that and being like, well, I'm going to make a pizza or, you know, whatever. But all the people in the world to come to the pizza party. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh. like, don't, don't do it. It was a funny joke. We had a good time. Now <laughs> let's Please move on. Please don't run it into the ground. Yeah. Please not. Um... That said, I, I do want to, sorry, I'm going to extend the show a little bit here, but I do want to talk about good crowdfunding campaign. Yes. And because we talked about, you know, what are some of the worst ones out there, but what are some of the best? By the way, in terms of some of the worst, nobody mentioned this because it didn't have like a traditional campaign through Indiegogo or whatever, mm-hmm. but Dashcon. Yeah. Because yeah. they, what, it was, that was like $20,000 yeah. in a couple hours? Yeah, it's like, that, that, I, admittedly, that does make me feel a little bit better because it's like, oh yeah, these fucks get $20,000 in an hour and I'm still here scraping by at, at, at where I am on Patreon. Yeah. Yeah, mm. made me feel real good. You fuckers. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um, so that said, guys, don't donate money to things or people unless they have, you know, some sort of plan and and actually let you know what's going on. Because this is another one of those things where communication comes into play. You know, things went sour at Dashcon, and then they only got worse because Dashcon wasn't talking about what was going on. You know, and eventually they came out and said, you know, here are the bills. And even though you know that all of that money that they raised did, in fact, go to the hotel and convention center, there's nobody can figure out why that money didn't exist in the first place. Exactly. And and why they owed that much money going into something like this. You know, it was poor planning. And, you know, don't donate things unless you know how your money is being spent and that there's a plan behind that. Yeah. Right. Um, but back to the good ones. Um, there's one that I, um, actually there are two that I shared through Facebook recently. Both of them, uh, are by little girls. One of them is, um, a backpack that has a pole on it for an IV bag. And it's, yeah, it's so, um, in this instance, I think it showed a a kid wearing it, but it's so people with chronic illnesses who need an IV bag can get out and do things, you know, because just because you have an IV doesn't mean that you, you know, are confined to a wheelchair or cannot be mobile. It just means that now you have this thing to carry around with you wherever you go. And you're going to be less likely to be active because there's, (laughs) you don't want to walk around with your arm up in the air all day. That's right. Just... Um, and you can't very well, you know, drag an IV pole with you out on a hiking trail. No. And so that was the purpose of this, that, you know, it's a backpack that has a, like an extension pole and then you hang the bag on there and then you can go do walk wherever you want to walk. Now that is and, sweet. Yeah. And, and I was like, that's a pretty cool idea. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one that I shared a little further back than that was a girl who invented a, um, a cup that has three different handles on it. So it basically forms a tripod. So you can't knock the cup over. Nice. Um, and she actually had invented it because her grandfather developed Parkinson's disease. And um, with the shaking, he was having a hard time picking up cups and was knocking them over. And so she developed this cup that you just can't knock over. Yeah. And it's like, you know, there are a lot of things and that's a really great, thing about crowdfunding it's like how many times in your life have you had an idea that you're like oh yeah i would totally make that but you never end up doing it because it's like where would you get the money yeah so that's definitely some good ones and again if i wasn't so po i'd be like shut up and my money and it's like kids it's like you know kids would never be making these things you know without the sort of funding like this yeah Oh yeah. Oh, but uh, but you did bring up some good ones. Those are two good ones. Um, I'm gonna actually bring up a couple of good Patreon campaigns as well to kind of tie into it. Um, 
I mean, obviously, I think mine is okay. Um, is it perfect? No, but again, mine is also always growing, always changing, always evolving. A um, couple other ones I want you know you guys should check out. Uh, you should check out Jess Kittrick's Patreon. She does good stuff. I should know. I picked her up for the site. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, check out her show Fool's Gold. Uh, hopefully, her episodes will be going up soon. She's been going through grad school, and she's been working on a new one that she wants to have be you know the fresh one on the site. So. So hopefully that'll be up within either this week or next week. Again, like I said, she's going through grad school, so it's understandable. Um, and her Patreon is uh, patreon.com slash ravenallegria, I think, 13. If not, just go under go under the support us on, on the site, rtgomer.com, and she'll be there. <laughs> uh, if, if you can't remember that or can't spell it, which I don't blame you. Uh, uh, also, uh, Diamanda Hagen who has a good patriotic campaign going as well. Um, if you don't know who she is, I have to ask what rock you've been living under for first, first off. And for second off, she does, you know, she does her own comedic reviews, um, Twatty who reviews, Dr. Who classic series, uh, reviews. That's starting to come towards an end. All these other video projects that she does. And she's Northern Irish and she is awesome. Whenever we have her on thespian talk, she is a treat and a doll. And, and she deserves she deserves the help I think because she she's good people, and of course her Patreon is patreoncom slash Hagen. and again, if I got that wrong because I'm going by memory, just she's also on the tab thing on the site, uh, you know, go and throw money at her. In fact, go and throw money at, at at everybody on the site that has a Patreon, because um, you know we all could use your help. Um, so with that, um, do you do you have any? good ones you want to point out there gonzo uh i don't know i mean i i more or less said all that i i think i need i need i feel like i need to i i think we've said all that really sort of needs to be said that there's a bunch of bad kickstarters out there because ever, there's always going to be assholes who abuse the system but there's people out there who are developing stuff to help people with parkinson's and people who you know have debilitating illnesses and people who are you know just in need in general you know in need, and there's people funding you know their albums and their movies and video games and stuff. But uh, you know, you take with the you know the good and the bad, and you just try and keep the bad from happening yeah, as much as good. possible. Take the good, take the bad, take them both. There you have the facts of life. Yep. <laughs> I know at least one listener was thinking about that. At least one. I know it. Oh, so with all that, um. That's going to be it for this week. Uh, where can we find you on the internet, Gonzo? You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, at GonzoLink. Uh, I also am on the Gotham High audio drama. I play Bruce Wayne. I am on... I'm part of Team Brotherhood's uh, abridged series, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood abridged. I play the narrator, and I also have my own podcast, the... Uh, I'm sorry... It's a Focus on the Frames. It's a mo- podcast about movies that I host with Zenith Will Rule. You can find it on his YouTube channel, Zenith Will Review, and on uh, Tumblr at Focus on the Fo- Focus on the Frames Podcast com. Sweet. And where could we find you, Holly? You can find me all over the place as Gooky Gox, G O O K Y G O X. You can also find my Facebook fan page, Holly Christine Brown, and over at Nerdvice. Sweet. And if you want to find me on the internets and all of that places, I am on Twitter and Tumblr at gomer 21 X. You can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And you can also find all three of my podcasts as well on iTunes, which is something I need to keep remembering to put out there. Damn it. Because <laughs> we are on iTunes. And again, if you want to go and check out my Patreon that I spent like a good that we all spent like a good hour bringing up here and there. Uh, that is patreon.com slash gomer 21 double X. And since, since I did neglect to bring her up during the show, I'm going to bring her up now. Like I normally do. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or any other video version and you see the lovely title card art and you want some more, that title card art is done by the lovely Becky Hopkins who has her own Patreon at patreon.com slash Becky hop. You can go there. You can, she has links to her DeviantArt account, her own personal site, and you give her some money, she'll give you some art. And if you give her enough money, she will give you a 30-second animation, which is really good because she is an award-winning animator. Yeah. Get some award-winning animation for your faces. Yeah. Uh, but that is patreon.com slash Becky Hop. 
And with that, we are going to get out of here. We will catch you guys next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Holly Christine and Gonzo Link, signing off. Bye. See ya. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.